comes to Melkor with the appropriate attitude. Right. Nobody else is going to do this. Myron approaches Melkor with the appropriate level of of reverence mm-hmm. and 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 glorification. Mm-hmm. He's able to, you know, we need you. You know, forget all that that stuff that's going on there. We need you. Like they they're not going to be able to do this. They got nothing. Yes. Okay. I I like this. Because he's already losing faith in Manway's leadership. Right. And when Manway comes back to the meeting of everybody with a strong suggestion of what to do and a reason for it, Myron respects that because he respects strength. Yes. When, when Manway is strong in what he wants to do and he has a, a plan laid out, Myron's like, yeah, we can go with that plan. See, right? See, aren't you glad you came back, Melkor? Now we can all do this together. Yeah. And He's not willing to leave Aule yet. Right. That's- so we can see him side continue to side with Manway, but the, in the destruction of the lamps, he has that moment of doubt of does Manway know what he's doing? And yeah. that's, yeah, okay. And we'll see, obviously, that doubt play out more later. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so it's okay to have Melkor stamp out then? Oh yeah, yeah. If okay. we can, if we have a way to get him back in, then yes, okay. yes. Um, yeah. Because it, that allow, it allows people to talk about what to do without him there, which yeah. I think is kind of necessary. And it's kind of necessary to get him and Almo out of each other's faces too. Right, because they're not going to resolve this right here and now. Like, they're not going to resolve it ever. Right. <laughs> like, Manway might think this can get resolved, but it really can't. So, so we can't yeah. just leave them all standing there at each other's throats. Like, that doesn't work. Right. It gets work. everybody out, out of the picture, mm-hmm. and it gives Manway space to figure this out. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he can react to the news that Melkor has left. Like, uh, I thought he would do that. Yeah. Like, okay, I saw that one coming. Like, we can see Manway recognizing what's going on with Melkor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, and, and this also gives us an, a, a, a chance to see Manway not looking like a fool. That's what I was, yeah. <laughs> that was my concern. <laughs> yeah. And so he looks at her and he's like, okay, well, we can't stay here. We have to find okay. Well, now if, if Varda is otherwise occupied, who's he going to have that conversation with? Um, he would is call together little... people who are leaders. Say again, he would call together people to uh, have a conversation. He's, he's a collaborative guy, okay? So maybe not Alma, maybe almost too upset right now, yeah. Um, it leaves us with Orame, Yavana, Aule. Who else? Nessa, Tulkas. Poor Nessa and Tulkas. <laughs> I kind of. This is where, where we find that Tulkas is of no avail in council. Right here. Like, you know, he, yeah. he's kind of like. This he's is... kind of like, whoa, what? Where are we going to go? What? We're gonna get those guys. Who is this? We're gonna get them. <laughs> yes. Mhm. Yes. It should be trying to. It should be like trying yes. to rein in Thor. Yeah. And you know he's more into flipping tables and just being like, "You ruined my wedding," <laughs> than actually thinking about any big picture relevant stuff. Yeah. And it um, would be you know it would be yeah. good to see Nessa kind of talk him down a little bit. You know. mm-hmm. okay. okay. So in that situation, so who's who's game? Ali's up for rebuilding stuff wherever. You know, wherever. Mm-hmm. You know. It, you know. I think his attitude should, to Manway should be: Look, wherever you decide to go, I'm fine with that. I can, you know, I can I can re- rebuild for us mm-hmm. anyway. Right. 
So Ale gives Manway his bit of confidence and yeah. his, we're going to get through this. Okay. Um, because he, he, Ale 100% trusts in Manway. You know, I mean, they, there's a moment mm-hmm. of doubt when it comes to the, when it comes to the dwarves, but it's not really a doubt in, in Manway's leadership ability. If anything, mm-hmm. it's a doubt. Lubitar knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's is upset by the lie. That was my cat. Okay, who else is there? Orame. I don't think Orame cares. Orame would be very willing to help out, yes. scout out a new yes. place. He's a roaming around yes. kind of guy. So he what would if- be... Manway would want him, like, Orme, we need, we need to find a new place to be. Can you? So maybe Orme's with him when he arrives in, in Valinor. Like he's part of his friend. Yes, because we can't, we have to be a little careful that this doesn't too closely mimic finding the elves and bringing them to Valinor. Yeah. Because if we have... Aroma is the finding, and then or, or you know, maybe the first they're traveling buddies right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I meant we can't have like emissaries go, then come back and tell the whole group we should all go, yeah. but some people don't decide, yeah, don't want to yeah. go with them. It's like this is starting to sound strangely it, it, familiar. Like the, the move is going to mirror that no matter what. Mm-hmm. Right. It just, we don't want right. to copy everything. Uh, but like, they, I can't see avoiding. Having RMA involved in this project, but having right. it together kind uh, of kind of pushes it away from. Well, maybe RMA is off exploring other lands on mm-hmm. the other continent, and Manwe turns himself into a bird or yeah. something and flies over and. Finds Valinor. So maybe Manway finds like Valinor that. by himself. And it kind of mirrors that shot that we got at the beginning of episode two, too. Right. Because if if it was Manway's decision to go to the center to find to found Almer, and it should kind of be Manway's choice of the new location. But we need to see some kind of decision. Like I would like to see some kind of decision for like this looks like the place. Mm-hmm. I have an idea. I'm going to run this by you. Okay. What right. if Manway says that to nobody? Like he's standing on what will become Tenequitl. Mm. All right. And he's now he can't see all the way out because Varda's not there, but he can see pretty right. darn far from here. And he's like, I think this is the place. And there's a voice from behind him mm-hmm. that says, of course, it's the play. It is. And he turns around. And it's yeah. Nose. Okay. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So, Mandos is my favorite Vala. Like the way Corey Olson likes Tulkus, that's my opinion yeah. of uh, I, 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 Namo I, 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 and Mandos. So, I want him to have the best dramatic introduction ever, and that one. <laughs> Give him a Batman entrance. Because that's his whole role, is to confirm that Manway's made the right choice. So why not do it in a dramatic, awesome yeah. way where we're like, who the heck is this and where did this come yeah. from? And we, you know, we pan around and see him. And he's just, you know, a guy standing there and and Manway is like, Oh, you came to Arda too? I, I didn't know you were here. Because he's like he remembers yeah. them, but he does he hasn't seen them yet. So he, like they can have that conversation. I'm like, yes, yes, we came when you did. We just we've been busy. <laughs> and maybe he shows him we and we introduce Mandos and we introduce mm-hmm. Lorian. I think we should see Mandos this time so that we can save Lorian for when everyone else okay. comes and it's pretty and okay. yeah. So he could say, Come and see the halls of Mandos. And Manway is like, oh, okay, I guess you go by Mandos now. Introduce Byre there as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. So he meets two of them, and he's like, oh, my brother is here as well. Um, you know, and he'll be happy to to see you all when you all yeah. come, because of course, Mandos knows that Manway's not going to meet Lorian on this visit. He's going to meet him on the next visit. <laughs> you know, like he can say things that are just very clearly like 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing that I like about Mattis is he knows exactly, with exact detail, on very specific things. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I like that. So then we go back. We go back down to uh, Almorin. And maybe maybe Manway doesn't maybe Melkor's already, you think Melkor's already there and Manway does, is surprised to see him? Wait, uh, again? Okay. We go back to, to, to post Almorin. Mm-hmm. Do we think uh, um, do we think that Melkor's already there? Maybe Manway is surprised to see him? Oh. Maybe Manway feels that Maybe this is evidence that this could be okay. Okay. I, I if yeah. If the whole point of this destruction of the lamps thing was for Melkor to try to take over, taking advantage yeah. of Manway's absence to return would be kind of perfect for him. And mm-hmm. not everyone's reacting well to his return. But he's like, he thinks he's got this because Manway's away. So clearly I'm in charge now. And everyone's like, no, we hate you. <laughs> yeah. So that would be, and for Manway to come back and not know what's going on, like, yeah, that would be, wait, when did this happen? <laughs> maybe Manway, Mandos, maybe Mandos is saying, oh, ha, ha, ha. maybe Mandos says, you, my, my brother Ermo is here as well. Mm-hmm. His lands are lands of healing. And you'll meet him when you return, because you have to go back now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so. Or maybe he doesn't like. Maybe he doesn't phrase it like an order. That's kind of more like an order. But maybe he says, "Because you're needed." Right. Yeah. Um. I suppose it's okay to be a little heavy-handed with an introduction to establish someone's traits. I yeah. And if we have him looking at the the tapestry that Vire is weaving at that moment, like it makes it clear that he's not giving him an aura, he yeah. just sees it there. Right. Um it would be a good introduction for Vire's tapestries because his first statement was clearly made on his own. Right. And not with her. So now if he makes another fairly prophetic statement. Yes. Okay. I. It, it could be something like. Not the first. And you can meet my brother on your return because obviously you don't have time during this visit. You're needed back at your place. Mm-hmm. And Manway can be a little bit like, ah, yes, I guess I should go. Thank you for you. what. <laughs> you know, like it should be a little clear that he's slightly taken aback by this, but not disturbed, and and that it's meant well. Like Mandos shouldn't be. I'll do me about it. He should be very. Yeah, he's not telling him in a way like he's not giving him orders. He's not telling him what to do. Right. He's just saying, he, right. you know, and and maybe he's like a little bit, like he he kind of like zones out almost a little bit. Not, I don't mean like he goes into a trance or anything like that, but he's kind of looking up at the at the tapestries and he's like, no. Mm, I would I would prefer that he look at the tapestry that's currently on her room. Uh-huh. And that she hasn't stopped, and that she has not stopped working yeah. while men might be in. Yes. Like, because her being silent is a weird thing when you meet someone and their response is to stare at you rather than to greet you. That gives off your vibe. So for her to have something that she's doing where she can look up and be like, and then go back to work, like she acknowledges him. She doesn't brush him off but she doesn't say anything and she keeps working. And then when he looks down at the tapestry and sees what's there, and then he's like, oh yes, and we will see you on your next visit. Yeah. You know, yeah. So it's clear that he got the message from her that she communicates with him via tapestry, which seems like the <laughs> most entish form of communication ever. Because <laughs> it takes a long time to make something show up on a tapestry. <laughs> okay. okay. So he gets um, back. Yes. He gets- and we we get back to we get post Almoran, 
while mm-hmm. Melkor is making a big speech about how uh, with this awesome place that he's that he's building. Ah, uh, that would be his reason to come back. He needs followers to go to, to come there with him. You know, and and there's a lot of people you- looking at each other like, oh, it's- here's a timing issue. Okay. If we want Melkor's presence to be a surprise, we can't show Myron going to fetch him in real time. We would have to show that as a flashback. Like it needs to be a surprise for the viewer. And we can't. We we don't have to necessarily make it clear that he's going to go. Also, okay. You know, there could be yeah. some question as to whether or not he actually is going to go. And then we get there, and he's there. It's a surprise to Manway. Yeah. Well, I know it's going to be a surprise to Manway. Just I feel like some of those surprises have a little bit more oof to them. If if, if, the if it's a surprise to the audience it. as well, yeah. But, but if, if it's the problem even, with this one is, go ahead. Sorry, they're going to be able to do. It. If it's a surprise to the audience, it's like, wait, why is he there? The last we saw, he stomped off and everyone hated him. What is, what is yeah, this? there has to be some kind of explanation. Agreed, agreed. Okay, so while Manwe was off searching, Myron went to seek out Melkor, and Arome went to search out something, and this is where we are now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so he is speech, so Melkor is speechifying. You know what I just thought of? Okay. I'm not suge- first I'm not suggesting that Orme actually I I I've, I've abandoned the idea of Orme going to Valinor with uh with Manway. But okay. I just uh, because I'm always comparing Orme to Batman. Uh-oh. So this I have this funny bit in my head where Manway's standing there at the top of Tenacritol and it says to um, to Mandos, it says it says to Orme, I think this is the place. And the voice from behind them says, of course this is the place. And they turn around and Mandos is there and and Orme turns to Manway and says, so that's what that feels like. Anyway, sorry. I get it. <laughs> Using tangent ended. Um... <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I think we leave out the Orme Batman reference and keep the scene the way it was. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, 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 it's fine. Okay, so he arrives, and all right. So what does he do? Does he does he interrupt Melkor in mid sentence, mm-hmm. or does somebody? Up. Does Melkor not see him walk in and somebody speaks up and says, hey, right. Melkor is just, go ahead. Yeah. So Melkor is doing his thing, giving his speech. People are listening to him, but obviously there's a lot of distrust of him at this point. I think we should visually show yeah. Oh, yeah. extreme distrust. But like, well, let's. Not even, not even just like the major players that we know 100% aren't right. on board, but right. like minor characters too. Or like, what's what's all this about? And what, yeah, so there yeah. should be a pretty strong distrust vibe. Manway walks in and is just like, oh, to see Melkor there, but doesn't have a chance to do anything before someone's like, oh, well, Manway's back now. Let's hear what we're going to do. Like immediately. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you know who should do that, right? Anway, his herald. Oh yes. Because oh, Melkor's yes. posse is That's out of the picture. Melkor doesn't have his his posse to to do stuff yeah. like that.